So really, really, that is my number one takeaway. Know the law. Mm -hmm. Know the law. Remember that you're at the MCAD if you're at the MCAD. State law is generally more favorable than federal law in, in areas where it differs. So make sure you know the law. I will now actually. And what you also had said on the phone when we talked was, and don't spend a lot of time arguing federal law. <laughs> <laughs> the MCAD does not have jurisdiction That's on right. that. Uh, Patty generously said that she's greatly appreciative <laughs> when her opposing counsel does dissertations on federal law um, in their position statements. <laughs> And then I ignore it. Mm -hmm. uh, my takeaway, point number two, which I will share, is um, what Ms. Kaplan said. Over-prepare, over-prepare, over-prepare again, and then one more time, <laughs> over-prepare. The, the thing about cases, you all know this, I know it's obvious, I feel a little dumb saying it, right? Two parties go in, both of them convinced they're going to win and one of them is gonna lose. And the only thing you can control is how much work you put in to do your best for your client. So don't skimp on the preparation, over-prepare. Okay, I only good came point. up with two That's all right. takeaways. Two, two good ones. I'm done. We only good have ones. 30 seconds, so. <laughs> all right, uh, you, you've heard these before earlier today, but I'll, I think they're worth re-emphasizing. Um, create the narrative at the beginning and weave in the documents and the timeline into that narrative. And Because at the end of the day, I, um, it's going to be one story versus another, which is more compelling, which is more fact-based, which is more speculative. Um, so get the theme and the narrative right at the beginning as you build your case. Number two, sell your client on the importance of preparation for testimony. I, I, I can't say this enough. Um, if they don't buy into it, they're not going to be credible. They're not going to be putting in the time to be good witnesses for you. And I guess the third point would be acknowledge your weaknesses as you develop your case. I mean, people become pot committed, so to speak. You know, I've, this is how I always saw the case. I've been building it this way. Now the facts take a little turn, whether it's a deposition or a document, and they're reluctant to want to adjust things, you know, because they like the case they had before. I'm ruthless with my cases. I just keep cutting it back, cutting it back, and turning it around as much as I have to um, and develop the strengths versus the weaknesses. So that's my takeaway. My takeaway is create a chronology with a key document <laughs> binder. Uh, be as organized and thorough about that as you can be. Come up with a good theme that really works. Um, Clearly, his theme was, it was your choice. It only worked so far, though. <laughs> it did, it did. I needed but you more didn't, facts. Bad facts. On the other hand, um, I didn't need so much of a theme, but um, and my theme, um, and you can evaluate how good it was, was unusual, maybe weird, but not a basis for discrimination. Mm -hmm. um, and um, prepare your witnesses. Because um, at the end of the, the takeaway for me is, at the end of the day, um, you'll know your facts, you know your law thing. Unless you are moving for summary judgment or defending it, you are not going to be the one to decide the case. In fact, it's all going to be about your witnesses. So all of your preparation, all of your knowledge is there so that you can transfer it to your witness. So while you all, um, it is true, you have to convince your client um, to devote the time to to um, practicing and preparing, how much um, what you've done will be that. And so you, you really have to prepare your witnesses and think about at all steps of the case, this is so that I can prepare my witness because at the end of the day, the case comes down to the witness's testimony. I mean, I guess I've probably already said my um, takeaways, but I'll, I'll reemphasize them that prepare, as everybody else said, prepare like it's a superior court trial case. Um, and be sure to get in as much evidence as you can about emotional distress, because emotional distress is, is you know, vague, and it's going to depend on what the complainant and the complainant's witness stay, how, how much detail they give. The more detail, the better. And uh, 
and be sure to put uh, specific evidence about back pay uh, damages and, and a mitigation.